Delivering pizza has always been a fun job for me. I get to meet everyone in the town that I live on the outskirts of. The pay is alright, but the tips make the job more than survivable for a high school student. Sure, I could spend the weekends partying, but from a young age, I decided I want to get out of this town. And the only way that I was going to be able to do that was early age saving. When I got my permit license, I immediately decided to hop in the local pizza joint in town that said, Hiring Today. That Saturday, I took home $150 in tips. Much better than hanging out with a bunch of douchebag jocks at school anyways. Kino's Pizza has been my home on Saturdays and Sundays for the past four years. This summer would be my last year there before I packed up and left town. I was nervous, excited, but even more so, happy to take on any shifts I could before the fall came around. Most days were busy. Our pizza was so good that I could understand why I was out of the store delivering pizzas more often than inside waiting to do my menial tasks for the night. Well, every once in a blue moon, the store would slow down. I would wash dishes, help carry out orders, but mostly surf Reddit waiting for the next address to pop up for me to head to. The next delivery did come in, and I waited for it to be done, chatting with the cute girl at the register before heading out. Once on the road, I started playing my music, unknowing to me my life was about to change forever. I saw a man on the side of the road with his thumb stuck out. Mom and Dad have always told me to keep driving past hitchhikers, but for some reason, because of how slow the store was and dreading going back and waiting for another delivery, I pulled over. The man was dressed well, almost as if he had just come from a fancy event. I couldn't figure out why someone would look like this while hitchhiking, but I was unbothered. My thoughts of my future adventures leaving this town, and in a way, envied the freedom of this man. The pizza was in the front seat still, steaming in the hot bag, so I popped open the back door. He thanked me softly and stepped in the back of my car. Heading anywhere specific, the man smiled and said, 24 Meadow Avenue. How convenient, I thought. That's a few blocks away from where I'm delivering this pizza. Of course, I brought the food to the customer first, but then we made our way to 24 Meadow Ave. I haven't seen you before. Are you visiting family? His eyes met mine in the rear view window. No. It was kind of an awkward silence for the next couple of blocks. I let him out and I went back to the store. I was happy to have my fun little excursion because when I got back, there were still no other deliveries up. I just told them that I had to grab some gas. The next day, I woke up to my mother and father making quite the commotion in the living room. I went downstairs to see my mother and father looking quite timid. There had been a homicide at 24 Meadow Ave. Chills went down my spine as I realized that. I had been there last night with that hitchhiker. Of course, no one knew this, but my parents were shaken up. There hadn't been a murder in this town for over a decade. People weren't used to this in such a peaceful town. The police said that they had no leads, but they were still investigating. A whole family had been done in, and I knew about it. I feared telling anyone because what if they thought I was a part of it? I figure they'll eventually catch the man and that'll be it. No harm, no foul. If I didn't bring him there, someone else would've. A few weeks went by and the cops had marked it up as a drifter rolling through town. I hope so too. And then came along another slow day. Almost like clockwork, the man was alongside the road. He wore the same suit as last time. There was no blood on it though. Maybe it wasn't him after all and it was just a coincidence. My morbid curiosity got the best of me. I pulled over. He got in the back, just like last time. Did... did you do it? He said nothing, except for another address. 
The same smile crept across his face just like last time. Fearful for my life, I drove him there. I'm sorry that maybe it seems wrong to you, but I was too young to die. After all, why would I have worked at Kino's Pizza the last four years if I was just going to die working at Kino's Pizza? I barely slept that night, thinking of what I knew I would see on the TV the next day. Of course I was right. In fact, this time the news reporter announced. The police found an interesting clue to these heinous crimes. She looked like she could barely read the next part. Carved into the bodies were the words, Thank you, all over them. I knew this man, the psychopath, was thanking me. It took me about a month to feel normal again, and by then it was August. Kino, the owner, had asked me to pick up some more shifts and I agreed. Some employees had quit in fear of the local murders. I felt a little more safe than the rest. Whatever. More money to get far, far away from this town and these awful memories. You can imagine at some point with all these extra shifts adding up, I would see another slow day at work. And I did. I knew that I would see him again. I planned on just driving by this time, hoping that he would just leave me alone and appreciate how I had already helped him in two awful crimes. Sure enough, as I was taking my next delivery, there he was. I sped up quickly and I passed him, holding my breath, praying that he didn't notice that it was me. I delivered the pizza to the house and decided to take a different way back to the store. I almost hit him when he was standing in the middle of the road. I'm sure most people would have laid their foot on the pedal, but then what? I told the police that this guy was responsible for everything that's been happening, that I had hid the truth from them, that I helped him drive there. My car squealed to a stop right in front of him, all while he held his composure. He stepped towards the driver's side. I'm gonna be his next victim for not stopping. Why didn't I just let him in and continue with denial that it was him? How will he do it? He knocked on my windshield, smiling his usual bone-chilling smile. I cracked the window just enough for him to press his lips up to the window. He hissed. You can pick the address this time. I don't know what came over me. I don't know if it was because I thought I didn't have a choice or if I am truly this evil. Maybe both. Earlier that year, one of my teachers had barely passed me. He was awful. I didn't want him to die over it, but I couldn't think of a better option. Tomorrow, he would be gone, and no one would know that I was the reason why. The man started showing up more often, even on busier days. Sometimes he would say an address, and other times he would smile and say, You pick. This went on all through August. We actually made some small conversation from time to time. Actually, let me rephrase that. I would talk and he would listen. I guess I did it to break the awkward silence. I told him my plans of leaving at the end of the month. Somewhere new, somewhere fresh, somewhere better. The town was on borderline lockdown when it was about my time to go. I was one of the few workers left who felt comfortable working the nights. Some people called me crazy. They didn't even know how crazy I had become. And that's when I picked him up one final time. I knew that and I'm pretty sure he did too. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit sad. We had taken out so many high school bullies, so many people that I wouldn't miss from this town. If I wasn't so dead set on leaving, I actually would have liked living in this reformed town. He looked a little somber as he sat in my back seat. He must know that it's our last. Hey buddy, maybe we both can pick one tonight. I'm not sure fully what you're capable of pulling off in one night. Though he looked sad, he firmly said, No. 
a little disappointed, but for all that he's done for me, I guess it's only fair that he gets to choose the last address. 1436, Pine Cove. That was my parents' address. I couldn't. I wouldn't. I can't let this happen to them. How could this man that felt like my friend now want to kill my family? I tried. I really did. I didn't want this for my family, but I really needed to leave. Their lives are lived out right. We rolled off to my last house I would drive to before my new life began. The man and I arrived at my house. I tried to hide the tears at first, but there was no point. He knows what he's going to do, and anyone can agree that, no matter what, I still feel an unwelcoming amount of guilt. I wish that he would have let me say goodbye to them. I think that would have made my travels much harder, though. This would be the first time that I stayed for one of his crimes. Usually, as you know, I would drop him off, and I would go and make the pizza delivery and hear about it in the news the next day. I simply would stay put in my car, hoping that he wouldn't be too long, and that he would make it painless. Of course, I was wrong. I was probably sitting there for an hour before he came back out. To my surprise, the man had no blood on his suit. In fact, he was still looking as sharp as ever. I don't know if the music in the cars had drowned out their screams or my cries, but I heard nothing. For the first time ever, the man in the suit said his goodbyes to me. He didn't seem glum anymore, like when I had first picked him up. He simply wished me good fortunes on my travels, and that was it. He walked away from the crime scene, and once I couldn't see him anymore, I got out of my car. There was no way that I was going to be entering through the front door. Two reasons. I wanted to avoid Prince at all costs. But I also didn't want to see what he had done to my loving family. I wanted to keep the memory of them untangled. Perfect. They always told me that I would grow up to be something great. I'm sad that they won't be able to see it for themselves. I grabbed the ladder from the shed on the back and posted it up against the house. The window was unlocked. Thank God I always forgot to lock it. I hopped into my room for the last time. I grabbed what I could and I went on my way. I wish that I had more guts than I do because I would have taken any money in the house that I could find. But there was no way that I was taking the risk of stumbling upon the new art the man in the suit had painted in my household. I got back in my car, looked at the house one more time before making my track west. I'm not going to say where I wanted to go and how far away from it that I am because I'm not sure if the police will look at this. I want to make sure that I can cover as much ground before they know what has happened. But I made a grave mistake. I never went back to Kino's. I never delivered the pizza, like I always do after dropping the man off. This poor lady didn't get her food in over an hour. Of course, she would call the store. Why didn't I think of that? I was already on my departure and I don't think that turning around would have bought me any extra time. Any minute now, Kino would decide to call the police. Why wouldn't he? Maybe he would wait until we closed. It would only be a matter of time before they check my home to make sure that I'm okay and safe from the man. And that's when they wouldn't find my car, they wouldn't find me. But they would find the next and final clue to their murders in town. They would blame me. They'd never seen or met the man in the suit for all I know. If anything, I'm the only person in town that has met him and has stayed alive. Maybe they would think that I was abducted by him, but that wasn't his style. Anyone who was home before would be dead. I doubt they would believe that I was the lucky one. They would think that it's me and had no reason not to believe it. They'll see me as the psycho. Maybe that's just what I've become. The roads wind down some steep hills before I make it onto the highway. I think that I'm at least five hours ahead of any police. I keep thinking about the man in the suit and how he had wished me farewell. He never really did say goodbye, 
Just wished good fortune. I hope that I don't see him again. I want to leave that town in the past. I'll keep writing later. Heading on to a main highway. I had to put the phone down while driving on the highway. I didn't need any excessive attention to myself, so I had to stop updating you guys for a while. I wish that it got better. The road stretched on for a while before I decided to take a rest. I drank coffee for as long as I could, but now the exhaustion has taken over. I needed to rest. Fortunate for me, I had found a rest stop to relax. I always felt uncomfortable about truck drivers, so I intended to make my stay there short. A quick nap, grab some food, water, and coffee inside and then my track would continue. As I turned off the exit, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was him, the man in the suit. His thumb was out and I knew what would happen if I didn't pick him up. He would just appear somewhere else and likely much more angry. I rolled on the window. What do you want? I did everything that you asked of me. Let me live my own life now. He seemed displeased. I bet he understood my anger. You are angry, but not completely horrified as I expected you to be. Did you see what I left in your house? You must have. How did you gather these belongings? I explained my way up to my room. Well, I guess we're going to have to turn back. The man pulled a gun on me quicker than I could reach to put the car in drive. He sat in the car and without any other choice, I turned back to the town that I never wanted to go back to. After some long driving where he sat smiling with the gun pointed at my head, I asked him why he was always smiling. You will see soon. I have to say, you played a great part. I'm thankful that we have spent such great time together, but it'll all be over soon. We pulled into my house and surprisingly, there were no cops. I guess Kino wasn't all too worried after all. When we made our way in, I couldn't believe what I saw. This living room was no longer what I had remembered it as. The couch was soaked and there were pentagrams everywhere. This wasn't like the other times. This looked like a ritual was about to take place, and I had fallen right into it. The man in the suit broke the silence. I've been smiling because I'm about to be free to live my normal life again. You see, about five years ago, I too picked up a hitchhiker. I brought her along to the horrific things that she committed. Eventually, it led me right to the death of my parents, too. The demon, Jarkaruj, had taken me over. He wanted me. It seems after some time he gets bored with the servant, and he'll prey on his new victim through his last. After tonight, your possession will begin. You have about 24 hours before you wake up somewhere new. Hitchhiking. You can't stop it. Don't try. Just listen to his whispers and hope he picks a new servant soon. And with that, he sliced my arm and put his palm to the wound. And then he placed it on his forehead and like that, he was gone. I don't have much time now, but I wanted to say if you could help me, please let me know. I guess I'll get out of this town. Just not the way I wanted, 